Gujarat Chief Minister Mr. Narendra Modi was invited to Wharton to participate in an economic forum where he was to speak on the Gujarat model of governance. But after some opposition, the invitation was cancelled. Who opposed the invitation? Did Wharton students oppose? No. Did Wharton faculty oppose? No. So who opposed it? It was people from outside Wharton. And this is not the first time they oppose Narendra Modi. In the next few minutes, we intend to show a pattern of connections and intentions that these people work with. In 2005, Angana Chatterjee, a faculty at California Institute of Integral Studies, founded a group that led the movement which resulted in the denial of U.S. visa to Mr. Modi. In 2011, Angana Chatterjee and her husband were suspended from their faculty positions on grounds of clear and convincing evidence of four charges, including reckless violation of established legal rights of students, reckless violation of professional ethics, dishonesty including misappropriation of funds, and persistent failure to perform position-related assignments. According to her wiki page, she is contesting the suspension, although she seems to have remained suspended as of March 2013. Curiously enough, although Angana Chatterjee led the movement against Modi in 2005, she was not even a signatory on the 2013 campaign, most likely because of the allegations of misconduct and the ongoing investigation. However, this time the campaign was led by Anya Lumba, Thurjo Ghosh, and Anjali Arundhikar, with whom Angana Chatterjee has published a book in 2012. Also, when Angana Chatterjee's husband was deported by the Indian authorities in 2010, a petition was signed to oppose it, on which Anya Lumba is a leading signatory. Other common signatories between this 2010 petition and the Wharton petition against Mr. Modi are Anjali Arundhikar, Pia Chatterjee, Sunaina Mayra, Simona Sahani, and Sabina Sahani. Someone recently modified the wiki page of Angana Chatterjee to remove the reference of her collaboration with Ghulam Nabi Fai, who is an agent of the ISI, the dreaded spy agency of Pakistan. Fai was arrested by the FBI in July 2011 for concealing a transfer of $3.5 million from the ISI to fund his illegal lobbying efforts to influence the U.S. government on the Kashmir issue. In December 2011, Fai pled guilty to conspiracy and tax evasion. A quick Google search will show ample evidence of Angana Chatterjee's significant number of collaborations with Ghulam Nabi Fai and his organizations, which promote violent separatist activities in India. We have been able to compile a list of a large number of such web pages. Many of the other signatories of the petition against the invitation to Mr. Modi have direct relations to either communist groups or violent separatist groups in India. For example, David Barsamia was deported by India in September 2011 with charges of violating the terms of his visa. He was also working with separatist elements in India. Despite this, there was a petition to oppose his deportation. Among the signatories are Angina Chatterjee, Anya Lumba, Suvir Kaul, and others. There are at least 13 signatories common between the 2011 Bersamia petition and the Wharton petition against Mr. Modi. Let's look at some of the other signatories of the Wharton petition. Two of the signatories are Daud Ali and Kathleen Hall. They hosted a conference at UPenn in March 2011 titled Maoism and the State of the Indian Left. This conference invited several speakers and Naxalite views were presented. Naxals are various militant communist groups active in many parts of India. They have killed hundreds of thousands of civilians, mostly in the poverty-stricken regions of India. According to the Global Terror Database, CPI Maoist was the largest perpetrator of terrorist attacks in 2011. They were responsible for even more attacks than the Taliban. The government of India has declared them as terrorist groups posing the biggest threats to democracy. This is the official webpage of the March 2011 conference organized by Kathleen Hall and Daud Ali. 
They invited several speakers from the Communist Party of India, including Prasenjit Bose, who is from the research unit of the Communist Party. They also invited Gautam Navlaka, who has been supporting violent groups in India, along with Angana Chatterjee and Gulam Nabi Fai. One of the attorneys prosecuting Fai also claimed a link between Mr. Navlaka and the ISI, a charge denied by Mr. Navlaka. The attorney alleged that Navlaka was introduced to an ISI general for recruitment by Fai at the ISI's direction. Mr. Navlaka, in fact, defends the ISI agent Fai. In a statement, Mr. Navlaka claims that the charges against Fai Saab were magnified and the mistake was minor, and that he is very proud of Fai Saab. His official statement states, quote, The crime that Fai Saab committed in the eyes of the U.S. law is of course being magnified. Even under U.S. law, his mistake was minor, unquote. He goes on to say, quote, I remain very fond of him and proud of him as a fellow traveler, unquote. There are other speakers at this conference who were sympathizers of violent terrorist groups in India, and some were also signatories to the Wharton petition. These include Sergio Mukherjee and Aritro Majumdar. The conference was used to provide an unopposed platform to sympathizers of violent separatists, including at least one associate of a convicted ISI agent. Isn't a reputed American university being inappropriately used to nurture violent terror groups in India? Daud Ali is the department chair of South Asian Studies at UPenn. Other faculty members who teach in his department include Anya Lumba, Kathleen Hall, Thurjo Ghosh, and Suvir Gaul. Here is the complete picture. Pakistan spy agency, the ISI, has been known to support the activities of Islamic terror groups and communist terror groups in India. Ghulam Nabi Fai is a convicted ISI agent who has been working closely with Angana Chatterjee and Gautam Navlaka. They, in turn, have close connections with several other signatories of the Wharton petition, some of whom are shown in this network. These so-called activists are supporting violent terror groups in India. At least 12 of them are also signatories to a campaign for the boycott of Israel. These include Anya Lumba, Anjali Arundikar, Simona Sahani, Sabina Sahani, Sunaina Mehra, and Pia Chatterjee. But they fail to say a single word against Pakistan, where Christian minorities are being butchered, Ahmadiyya minorities are being persecuted, and Shia Muslim minorities are being massacred. The Hindu population in Pakistan has shrunk from 22% in 1951 to only 2% in 2011. Nearly one-fifth of the population has disappeared. Still, we did not find them on any petition against Pakistan. One can easily imagine why. These are the leading common petitioners against Modi, against Israel, and against the deportation of Barsamiya and Angana Chatterjee's husband. Still, these people are unwilling to petition against Pakistan? So the situation is clear. In short, a democratically elected leader is being held hostage to the propaganda led by supporters of violent extremists and radical ideologies. The world's two largest democracies are being fooled by hypocrites and radicals. But this type of politically motivated propaganda happens in every country. During his first presidential debate in 2008, President Obama famously said, if you don't have a record to run on, then you paint your opponent as someone people should run away from. The same is true in the case of Mr. Narendra Modi. The only difference is that too many of us have believed this ill propaganda and for far too long. As far as Gujarat is concerned, the reality seems quite the opposite. The state has grown by leaps and bounds in the last decade. The per capita income of the state is about 45% higher than the national average. In 2011, the state produced nearly 72% of all new jobs in India. And the last 10 years, 
have been the single most peaceful decade in Gujarat's history till date. See Gujarat's version of the story here. Lastly, our purpose is to expose the communist and fascist-like propaganda of the coterie mentioned earlier. The fact is that after 10 years of intense media scrutiny and judicial investigation, the Supreme Court of India has given Mr. Modi a clean chit. Mr. Modi has been the democratically elected chief minister of Gujarat for three consecutive terms, an unprecedented feat for the state. And in almost all recent polls, Mr. Narendra Modi emerges as the people's choice for the position of Prime Minister of India. We would also like to specify, we are not a political organization and we don't support any political party. Satya Meva Jayate, Truth Alone Triumphs.